Hey guys, it's Lancelot Chaubert here with uh, Astro House. So grateful for you guys having me on. Um, here to talk a little bit about my debut novel, Bellhammers, uh, which is, uh, the subtitle is The True Folk Tale of Little Egypt. Uh, Little Egypt is what um, people in the region call Southern Illinois. It's where I grew up. Got a couple of notes on there, still proofreading a bit. But um, yeah, it's about four generations of carpenters chasing a major oil company, obviously the oil can, out of the state using pranks, practical jokes, uh, compiled from a lot of interviews with this guy, uh, who's in the story as uh, Remy. Um, Remy Broganer uh, starts a construction company named Bellhammers and then pranks the, the oil company out of the state. Uh, gonna talk a little bit about the free write, and then maybe if they'll let me, uh, read some from the book. Uh, grateful for Astro House having me on. I have a first generation free write, um, just whack myself solidly in the chin. Uh, and, uh, my mother-in-law, Tammy Ballou, shout out to Ch Tammy, uh, got me the black keys, um, to kind of, you know, the aesthetic thing that you can swap out. Um, but you've got A folder, B folder, C folder, right, for your Google Drive. Um, I like using A for novels, B for, like, blog posts, and C for, like, shorter pieces, articles, uh, essays, poems, things like that. But specifically on the A, uh, when I was working on Bellhammers, um, I, Bellhammers was the first novel that I didn't write straight through. I've written seven. This is the first I published. Um, but typically I write one large document, um, and, you know, that creates all sorts of organizational problems and different things once you get to that size. And that's the case whether you're writing a thesis or whether, you, you know, for your PhD or if you're writing um, a long-running TV series, uh, novels, any any long-form document. And I started tinkering around, tinkering around with Scrivener in this time. So I realized if I just, you know, every time I write a chapter, I just slam on those double new keys and chunk up the, the text. Uh, I can write it uh, outside of chronological order, that sort of thing, and, and, and chunking up the document um, based on kind of my step outline into those separate uh, RTF files. I can then drop those back into Scrivener and then arrange them at will. It created a lot more callback jokes, created a lot more uh, kind of call and response uh, harmony between promises made and promises kept within the novel, and then also a lot of uh, symbolic and, and metaphor echoes throughout the whole piece, made it a lot tighter. Uh, so I really like the free write for that. Um, you know, obviously carrying it out into Greenwood Cemetery or other places here in New York uh, has been really nice um, to go without a charger much longer than I would go uh, on my MacBook Pro. So I'm grateful for Freewrite, uh, grateful that they let me test one out in their offices back when they were uh, first starting out and wrote a little piece in there called The Work and the Sadness. Um, but I'm going to read some from Bellhammers now, and maybe they'll hang on to it, or maybe they'll cut it. But... Uh, here we go. Um, this is 1976. Again, it's a mid-century uh, historical novel. Um, he, Remy has a son uh, named Bryn at this time, and his wife is named Beth. That night, he fought a groundhog underneath the house. Technically, they had a full basement, but it didn't cover the entire floor plan. Some of the house, the newer part, had a crawl space. And it was somewhere down in that crawl space, Remy heard a rumbling at around two in the morning. Beth said, Oh, God Almighty, the earth is swallowing the house. Like hell, Remy stirred awake. I was dreaming about tournaments. No time to talk about basketball. There's a monster under there, she said. Not basketball nights like Sir Lancelot used to fight in. Horseback with lances and Remy! I'm going. He got to going. Underneath that fiddleback infested crawl space, he used an old deer spotlight, you know, like the hunters and the police both will use in a dark woods, one for the living and the other for the dead. At first, all Remy saw was fiddlebacks, and Remy was scared. Uh, by the way, a fiddleback is, is what Southern Illinois calls a brown recluse spider, very, very poisonous spider that makes skin nar narcotic. Uh, nar necrotic, <laughs> not narcotics. Uh, <laughs> At first, all Remy saw under there was fiddlebacks, and Remy was scared. Kid in his youth had gotten bitten by one of those one time, and it was like death itself started to rot that boy's arm off, spreading like the plague, spreading like how a uh, rot will spread in a tree trunk struck by lightning until it killed that boy. 
He moved past slow, scared for his life and his arms. Shining that light further, he saw one of them d groundhogs had started digging on the north side. He got over there and didn't know if the thing had dug under it, under the whole house, under the wall. He looked up there and saw gnaw marks on the floor and a bit of light where they'd started to get through to his brand new family room. And boy, was he ever mad. But he wasn't going to stick his hand under that hole to see. He wasn't about to have his hand eaten off by a groundhog. No, sir. He crawled back past all them fiddleback nests with struggle and sweat and fear and went upstairs and looked for a hand mirror, but he couldn't find one for the life of them. He looked everywhere he thought Beth might have in there. He couldn't get a mirror. Mom, he said to his wife, Beth. What? She asked, shot up in bed. Did you get it? No. Well, try. Do you have a hand mirror? What do I need one of those for? Lena does my hair. Damn it. What? She asks, is it a curse? Not quite, he said. Then why are you cursing? Because damn it, Beth, sometimes I like to at two in the morning with beasts of the netherworld have risen to tunnel my house. She snorted out a sigh. He said, get under there with the flashlight for me and stick your hand down in there. You must be crazy, she said. I'm saner in stainless steel. No, you're crazy, because only a crazy man wouldn't have the spine to shoulder his own curse like Adam did for Eve, asking some wife to grab hold of some monster in some pit because you got no spine yourself. Bryn, their son, was standing in the doorway eating one of Beth's peanut butter cookies, munching loudly and grinning. What the hell you want, son? Remy said. Bryn munched loudly. Oh, go on. Don't let me stop you. You don't understand, son. Stay out of it. Bryn said, Groundhog's under the house. What's to understand? It's a little excerpt from Bellhammer's The True Folk Tale of Little Egypt. It was written uh, with drafts on a free write in chunks and then sent to Scrivener for revisions. Thank you so much, Astro House, for having me on. Really appreciate you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of your good work soon as you continue to, to develop, uh, I think you call them legacy products that uh, make them like they used to. So thanks again uh, for the free write and all of your good work.